this is Michelle with Michelle's Macarons, and today I'm gonna to talk about some mistakes I made when I first started my home bakery business. Okay, the first mistake I made, and I talk about this all the time on my Instagram page, is charging too low. So that is a huge thing I see a lot of home bakers doing, even seasoned home bakers, not just new home bakers. They charge too low, and then you're in this endless cycle of baking a lot, not making enough money, baking a lot, not making enough money and you just feel like you're working constantly and you're not making even enough to keep your business going. It's hard to feel good charging a lot because you feel like I'm working from home. This is like not a real business, but it is a real business. And a lot of people are working from home nowadays and they're getting paid a livable wage. Why shouldn't you? So make sure you're charging enough for to cover all of your expenses, all of your product, all of your ingredients, and you're paying yourself or else you will start to resent this business. Another mistake I made in my home baker business was taking every order I got. That can be difficult at first because you just want as many orders and as much money as possible when you first start out. If I were to go back and do it again, I probably would still take those orders. But once I kind of got a hold of my business, I would stop. Like the orders that you guys know what I'm talking about, the ones that people are like, I want five different flavors for 10 macarons, or I need it by this weekend and I need all of these flavors. Just ones that aren't really considerate of you and your time, consider not taking those orders and just saying I'm I'm booked for this week or whatever, politely decline them. Because after a while, that is another thing that might lead to some burnout in your business. If you like this video and you wanna see more like it, hit the subscribe button and the bell next to it to be notified whenever I come out with a new video. Oh, not posting a lot on Instagram. That was another mistake I made. I was really worried that I would bother people and I didn't want to be annoying, so I didn't post a lot. Like when I had new flavors or I was gonna be somewhere, I would post maybe once a week or something because I thought I don't wanna annoy my friends and family, but I mean, I annoy them all the time in person. Why can't I do it on Instagram? But also it's not like that. They can scroll past, they can unfollow like, Think of all the advertisements you see every day. I've said this a million times, but like think of how many times you see an Amazon advertisement or Coca-Cola or something. You just skip past it. It's No one's making them sit there and watch a three minute commercial like on TV. So it's not as annoying as you think it is. And to your customer, that's not annoying at all. They want to see what you're doing. And a lot of your friends and family wanna see what you're doing too. So it's not annoying. They like seeing your stuff, especially if you have good content that is showing what you're making, showing stuff like that. This is kind of, I already said this, don't do the price too low, but that can be something that you kind of fall into if you're doing wholesale. If I were to go back, I probably would still do it because it did get my name out there, but it's hard to stand up for your business when you're asking someone to sell it wholesale and say, no, this is the price I need because they can easily just say no but it might be better in the long run for you if you do say, okay, this is the price I'm selling them at, you know, if you can't meet that price and it's just not gonna work out. You gotta really think about, do I wanna do this to kind of promote my business and get my name out there, or do I wanna do this for the money? A lot of the times, the wholesale for me has been, I wanna do this to get my name out there and to get people to see me as a baker and see what I make. So you kind of have to look, and see if which one you want because some wholesale accounts you won't make that much money but if you think about it they are providing the they're paying for the overhead of the store they're paying the employees to sell your products they're paying for marketing to get people in so it does kind of pay for itself in that aspect but it is something to consider when you're first starting oh this is a mistake i made and I don't know, it's not available for everyone, but if you can hire someone, I waited way too long to ask for help. Like if you have the funds and space in your home and you can have someone help you do just small things like packaging or work a farmer's market for you so you don't have to be working every day of the week, just small things like that, get some part-time help. If you can do that and you can do it legally in your state or if you have a sibling or a kid that can help you, I mean, if your kid's of a appropriate age, allowing someone to help you. That was where I, I thought I'm doing everything myself. I have to do everything myself, but you don't have to do everything yourself. If you can hire someone or you, someone will work with you in exchange for product, um, 
that would just make things a lot easier. You don't have to do everything by yourself if you have the funds or something that you can give the other person so they can help you. Okay, if you'd like, you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram and I'll put those links in the description. And if you need help starting or growing your home bakery business, I have a program called the Home Bakery Blueprint um, and I will put a link to my email list below and you can sign up for that and then you'll get an email when that opens up and you can join. Okay, check out these other videos. Okay, love you, bye.